ZANU-PF's involvement in observing the elections, and they say that ZANU-PF will undermine the credibility of the electoral, our electoral process as they have serious challenges in conducting free and fair elections in their country. What was your response um, to to the ATM? And then, if I'll just bring in Ubab Mawe to Mazuri. Um, last week, um, during the training, you and Mr. Shiburi um, well, actually, Mr. Shiburi had said and told journalists in the context of what's happening with the MK party, Jablan Kumal was saying that he's a real leader and not Zuma. You told journalists that the candidate, candidate lists are final. Even though people are expelled from the party, they still remain on the list. Political parties are locked in the arrangements that are made in the context of the ballot papers being shipped overseas. Now, with what's happening in the Constitutional Court, if the Constitutional Court finds that the Electoral Court had actually erred in saying that um, former President Jacob Zuma could actually um, be a candidate and partake in the elections, what then happens? Um, does the ballot still remain the same in that context? Thank you. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, we did receive a letter from Mr. Zungula um, complaining about um, the presence of, um, the alleged presence of uh, ZANU PF. We, we, we have nothing to do, really, as a commission with uh, their presence in the country. ZANU-PF is not an accredited observer mission. The commission has not approved them, has not uh, accredited them. Um, so they won't be observing uh, these elections. And uh, communication in that regard has been uh, made available to Mr. Uh, Zungula. The issue about the outcomes of the Concord uh, matter involving um, the erstwhile president, Mr. Zuma, that, that the outcome will have no bearing on the ballot paper. Um, as matters stand, Mr. Zuma is the registered party leader of MK Party. And to that extent, he is the person whose photograph is on the ballot paper for MK. Now, whether uh, he is a candidate or not a candidate, it has no bearing on that aspect because you are on the ballot paper if you are a registered leader of a political party, irrespective of whether you are a candidate or not a candidate in that election. So the, the, there won't be any, um, any um, impact, really, in respect of the, uh, of the ballot paper. Yes, Mr. Kumalo, the, um, you are correct in saying that the Commission has filed an application for leave to appeal the decision of the Electoral Court insofar as it relates uh, to using honorary consuls as additional uh, places uh, abroad. Um, the effect of that appeal is to suspend the order of the Electoral Court. So until the matter is ventilated in time and determined in an appeal, the order of the Electoral Court is suspended. So there is, at this stage, um, the, until we, we, the matter is prosecuted in the appeal, um, the situation remains as currently. Um, the, yes, um, the Electoral Court did send the witness statement that was delivered to the Electoral Court to, uh, to the Commission. Um, the Commission has uh, written to the legal firm representing uh, the person who um, deposed to the witness statement and asked them to file a proper application before the Electoral Court. In other words, a notice of motion with a founding affidavit and all other supporting evidence if there is available. Once that has happened, then the Commission will be able to respond um, uh, to those um, allegations. But uh, at this stage, uh, there's nothing really more to add other than to say we've written to the law firm and asking them to go 
to the electoral court on a notion on, on a notice uh, notice of motion.